Welcome Knowledge Explorers, I am Dr. Gaurav Singh, your course instructor for this course, Learning and Teaching. As a teacher or as a training teacher or as a student, you must have observed in the classrooms that whatever learners learn, they learn through various ways. Sometimes they learn when they do certain observations. Sometimes they learn when they collect certain experiences. Sometimes they learn when they do something on their own. It means that learning takes place through various means and methods. And one such important learning is observational learning. In today's discussion, I am going to discuss with you different dimensions and aspects of observational learning. So let us discuss about what is observational learning. Let me share few situations with you. The one situation is that have you ever thought that how does a child learn to make a specific facial expressions for a given situation? Because the facial expressions are non-verbal communication methods and child learns these on its own by observing someone, maybe by observing their teachers, their peers, their parents, their siblings. How do they learn it? How does a child learn to walk? How does a student repeat the steps followed by a teacher in an experiment? Many times in your laboratory, you demonstrate something and you expect that a student should also demonstrate the same thing by following the steps suggested by you. How does they learn those steps? How does a student learn not to do a particular behavior after watching others being punished for it? So if someone is being punished for a bad behavior in the society, other also learn that this behavior is bad behavior. We should not repeat it. How do you learn to be in queue after watching others in same queue? at the railway station, at the cinema hall, at other places where people are maintaining certain distance and they are in queue. What do you do? The answer is you basically observe. So what is observational learning? Observational learning involves observing and modeling another individual's behavior, attitude and emotional expressions. So if someone observes someone's behavior, their attitude, or their emotional expressions and they not only observe it but they also model it or repeat it. So sometimes observational learning is also referred as shaping, modeling or vicarious reinforcement. So these are few terms which are being used sometimes for observational learning in the literature. Let us try to define what observational learning is. Observational learning basically describes the process of learning through watching others, retaining the information and then later replicating the behavior that was observed. So in observational learning, a learner observes someone, then retain the information what he or she has observed and then replicate or repeat the same behavior whatever he or she has observed whenever required or whenever there is a situation to use that information or use that learning. So observational learning is a process you can say which involves a lot of things. Here you can see a cartoon and this, this cartoon I have taken from Brini Gilmuk's Beribel on a website called www.beribelmind.com and where this illustration has been given to reflect that what observational learning is. So if two people visit to a restaurant and they don't know how to eat by chopsticks, so what they are doing, first they observe how others are using chopsticks, how they are using those chopsticks to eat something and later they start using it. Whatever behavior has been learned through watching and replicating by others, that comes under observational learning. Actually, the concept of observational learning was proposed by Bandura and Bandura's social learning theory is very famous. Bandura was of the opinion 
that internal mental states must have a role in learning and how these mental states works these mental states helps in observation so what is the observational learning according to vandura vandura has said that observational learning involves much more than imitation so observational learning is not that if someone is doing something and others are watching to that and trying to imitate that because observational learning involves mental processes and processing of the thoughts processing of the observed informations processing of the facts and after that processing learners come out with a solution because in imitation a personal simply copies what the model does but observational learning is more complex than this simple imitation there is a very famous experiment which bandura did with his colleagues that is called bobo doll experiment and if you want to understand the concept of observational learning you should learn what this experiment was actually a bobo doll was kept in a room and bandura ross and ross in 1961 they tested this on 72 kids 36 were boys and 36 were girls which were nursery school children of the age between 3 to 6 basically they pre tested how aggressive those children were at that age on a four point scale then what they did they basically divided this whole uh, lot of 72 kids into three teams 24 children were shown aggressive models 24 children were shown non aggressive models and 24 children were not shown any model when the aggressive behavior was shown to the children and when they got the opportunity to play with the bobo doll they behave the same the children who were shown aggressive models developed some aggressive behavior who have not shown the aggressive models they developed non aggressive behavior and the students who were not shown any behavior they played as they want to play now what kind of models are there so in observational learning bandura said there are three types of model live model verbal model and symbolic model let us see what these models are when bandura was talking about live model live model means when a learner observes a person and imitates the behavior when and where required so in the live model the model or the person shows or demonstrate the behavior and that demonstrated behavior is being observed by the learners and learner repeat that and imitate that apply their that learned behavior in the situation in which they thought that it is essential or it is effective another are verbal models so in verbal modeling model doesn't perform the behavior rather they explain or describe its steps like in a laboratory either you can demonstrate an experiment by doing on your own and then you can ask your learners to do it or you can tell them only the steps of the experiments describe the steps which they need to follow how to handle an equipment you don't show them how to handle an equipment but you can give them verbal instructions so if a model is being presented verbally not actually not live and the students are learning that and repeating that and imitating that and showing that behavior that is called verbal modeling third modeling is symbolic modeling here when a learner learn about a behavior from real or fictional people either by reading the description in books or manuals or in videos or in games or at internet and then he or she try to imitate that in realistic situation that is called symbolic modeling so let us see certain examples of observational learning have you ever thought how a children learns to fold the clothes after watching his or her parents doing the same they observe it they practice it and they imitate it when people visit to a restaurant of a different culture and do not know how to eat they don't know what are the eating etiquettes in this restaurant but they learn those eating etiquettes by watching others and copying their actions when a child joins a group of children playing some new game and the child doesn't know how this game is being played but when the child participate in the game with the group of children quickly he or she learns the games its laws its rules 
by observing others' action in the play. So these are few examples of observational learning. Let us see what are the conditions for observational learning. There are four conditions. One is attention, then retention, then production, and then motivation. How these conditions work? When I am saying attention, attention means or when as a teacher you are demonstrating something, students pay attention to the teacher, his or her action and words. For example, in a dance class, a student not only observe the action of their teachers, but they also pay the attention on the instructions given by the teacher and follow those instructions along with the actions to learn dancing skills. So that is called attention. Then after attention comes retention. Whatever they have learned, whatever information they have collected, they memorize it and store it in their memory. And when a situation comes where they need to apply that knowledge, that information, that learning, they recall it and they use it. This is called retention. Third is production. So what production is? Basically, learners replicate the observed behavior. Like if one learner child is doing fishing and another child is observing it, then another child also replicate the same behavior. How much one can replicate, it depends upon his or her abilities. For example, in sports, if few students are playing and other students are watching, when they try to replicate the same skills, it also depends on whether that particular student has those abilities to replicate that or not. So replication also involves skills and abilities. Next is motivation. Whenever learners learn something, they observe something, they go through different stages and they basically get motivated to learn. When they observe something, later they get motivated to do the same. And this was a very important finding of Bandura's Bobodol experiment. Now let us shift our focus towards the significance of observational learning. So what is the significance? As a teacher, you can introduce the concept with the help of observation. Whenever you are introducing any concept, let your students observe either some behavior or some model or some presentation or some demonstration. You select the model to represent the skill and behavior which is very important. What kind of model you are selecting? Are you selecting a person? Are you selecting an instrument? It depends upon the nature of the content. So your role is to find out appropriate model which you want to show. Appropriateness of the model is basically the key of success in observational learning. So if you have an appropriate model for a content, the observational learning will be very successful. Learn. Sometimes you yourself or the peers, means the other students, can be used as an effective model. Sometimes the skilled person who are involved in painting, drawing, dancing, they can come to your class, you can invite them, they can demonstrate their skills and you can arrange a visit of your learners to their places. Both possibilities are there. So I must say that if you want to use observational learning in your class, there are different ways to use it. My suggestion is that practice some observational learning strategies in your class to make your learners effective observers because observing is not seeing, observing is not watching, observing is a meaningful behavior and it is a meaningful observation. So I hope that with the help of this video, you will be able to motivate your learners for observational learning. Let us encourage our learners to have meaningful observations and practice observational learning. Thank you very much.